Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm gonna review this, the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. I'm gonna first take it out in a little run, then I'm gonna stick it on the turntable, discuss the specifications, see what Brooks had to say about it. Then I'm gonna review it, compare it to some other shoes, and finally, I'm gonna see if I can recommend it. I bought the Brooks Hyperion Tempo because I wanted to look at a fast, non-carbon plated shoe. I've had a Hoka One One Carbon X, Carbon X SP, Rocket X, and a Fuel Cell RC Elite by New Balance, and they all have carbon plates. And I wanted to compare a fast shoe without a carbon plate and see what I could find in the difference. I made a short video of me running in the Brooks Hyperion Tempo in the Dublin Camshires. It was frosty, so I'm not going particularly quick, and every now and then you might see me slip and slide, and you'll certainly see some frost on the ground. I had planned a different occasion, but due to restrictions, uh, I had to go to, because uh, of coronavirus, I had to go back and use a more familiar one that's close by. I enjoyed the running around, as you may have been able to see. Uh, beautiful sunny morning, and I kind of fooled myself into thinking that it was gonna be like that for the day. Went out in the same gear, ran two and a half uh, hours that afternoon, <laughs> poured rain. Uh, so, yeah, changeable weather conditions here in London. But anyway, let's stick the uh, shoes up on the turntable, have a look and discuss the specifications. So what did Brooks say about this shoe? Well, get the most out of every workout. This men's running shoe is a light and responsive trainer that keeps you in your stride so you can run and recover faster. Well, it is a light and responsive trainer. I don't know about keeping your stride. I mean, they have guide rails on various shoes like my Transcends to kind of keep you in a steady uh, uh, gait, I suppose. Um, so how exactly it keeps you in your stride, I don't know. They are nice to run in, um, but most of it is true. I mean, they are light, they are responsive, uh, and you can run fast in them. Brooks say the Hyperion Tempo has an eight millimeter drop. Uh, this particular shoe is a UK size 12, US size 13, 47.5 EU, and 31 centimeters. Uh, in this size, it weighs 255 grams, nine ounces in the right shoe, and a little bit less, 250 grams or 8.85 ounces in the left. Brooks say it weighs 207 grams or 7.3 ounces, but they don't say in what size. I find that intensely frustrating that they just randomly pick a size. I'm presuming it's from a small shoe, but who knows. Overall, it's about 15 grams lighter by shoe than the Hoka One One Rocket X, and almost identical to the Fuel Cell RC Elite by New Balance. Uh, and it's also one of the narrowest shoes that I own. Let's discuss the shoe. Well, there are holes in the upper, and uh, I suppose it's one of the reasons I make these videos. I, you can't really tell on the Brooks website that these are holes, but every now and then these, some of these black strakes are actually holes. Uh, when I ran on it last night, it was very cold. Uh, well, it was, it was zero degrees or whatever, but my my feet didn't feel cold. It's not like there was a rush of air coming through and I felt very cold in the shoe. I felt fine. Um, the laces are super thin. Uh, it's, like, it's like everything they did in the shoe, they just made thinner than what they usually do. They're super thin laces, really, really thinner than everything else they use. A super thin tongue. It didn't cut me. Again, I have a, a version to, to that on some of the shoes. Um, and then even the, even the heel, although it's, it's taller, it kind of feels, well, for most of the shoe, it's just a single layer of this fabric. And at the back, it's like as if they've got uh, the liner of the shoe, which is a sort of light fabric, uh, the outer fabric, and then in between, it's, it's, it's almost a feeling like this piece of cardboard, a tiny piece of cardboard in between, giving it some structure. Uh, maybe when I'm finished with the shoe, we'll saw it in half and see what's actually in there, but that's kind of what it feels like. The outsole is the DNA flash, uh, this big yellow wedge. It's not like there's two or three different materials and it's not like there has to be a carbon fiber plate sandwiched between it. So it's really one, uh, it's very nice to run on. Um, I 
criticized the Brooks Bedlam before uh, for being very hard to run on. There's a nice, nice feel to these, but it's largely uh, the same foam throughout. Um, and then a very simple little uh, outsole, very simple piece of uh, plastic stuck on mainly where I, would, where I would hit at the rear, at the front, nothing much in the middle. Um, but quite quite grippy. I mean, again, uh, you'll see it's a bit dirty because I was out run running last night. But actually, I don't have any worries about the grip or the traction in this particular shoe. This shoe is available in several colors on the Brooks websites. I say available, they weren't available in my size. They're only available here. Um, they come, there's there's a very nice white and nice blue, uh, which I like. There's a black, I think, with, a, with the same blue. Um, neither of those colors, the black or the white, film particularly well so typically i avoid them but they look great in the shoot they weren't available but actually i like uh, this particular color this is gray g-r-e-y we'll come to that uh there's uh nightlife which i'm guessing is the yellow and then there's black uh so a nice nice color scheme on this particular shoe there are some oddities on the brook side in relation to the color gray so over here in ireland i think we pretty much spell gray g-r-e-y and in the united states mainly it's g-r-a-y so on a multinational site, and this is some of the stuff you discover in Brooks and all these various other bits and pieces of large international sites, there's odd bits going on. But if you have a look at the sites, there's a panel on the left and you can option things like different colors and the color G-R-A-Y appears. If you search G-R-A-Y on the US site, you get 102 items, all clothing, and much of it which is black. If you search G-R-E-Y, you'll get 47 pairs of shoes. When you go on the Irish site, if you search G-R-A-Y, you get one pair of shoes. That's it, the Adrenaline, G Adrenaline GTS 21s. Uh, but if you search G-R-E-Y, you get 37 items, 34 pairs of shoes, uh, one pair of shorts, a bra, and a t-shirt. You'd, you'd think they'd have thrown in a pair of socks and I could have, we could have the full outfit. Uh, anyway, that's one of the oddities of these uh, sites of, of international stuff where there's all sorts of weird spellings. Anyway, we'll move on. Sorry for that rabbit hole. I like to look at this shoe. Uh, it's a real less is more approach. There's not an awful lot to it. Uh, the sole is a yellow color uh, with a bit of black, obviously. The top is largely a uniform material. Some holes cut out in it, um, a bit of threading added onto it around the, around the, the collar, um, but not a lot going on. I thought this might be reflective detailing down here. From what I can gather, it's, it's not. Um, but what I like about it is the consistency in the design. So they're trying to make a lightweight shoe. So you make everything lightweight. You make the liner lightweight. You make the laces thin. You do the whole thing. That will have an effect on the design life of the shoe. But there's no point in one part of the shoe wearing out and every other part of the shoe. Let's say the first part runs out after 200K and the rest runs out after 500K. Well, your shoe's done after 200K. So let them all be made of a consistent and uh, even wearing approach. Uh, now, I don't know what the design life of this shoe is, and we'll talk about it a little about that about later on in relation to another Brooks shoe. Uh, but it's a shoe I like the look of, and I like going running in it. So how do they feel? Uh, well, they feel great. Uh, it's a 150 dollar, 150 euro, 140 pound, pounds uh, sterling uh, shoe. Uh, it, it feels really nice. I've got a couple of others to compare it with. Uh, the Rocket X by uh, Hoka. Um, these, these next three are carbon plated shoes. Uh, this is much squidgier than the Brooks. Uh, not a shoe I particularly like. Uh, shoe I love, uh, the Hoka One One Carbon X SPE. It feels firmer than, than, than the Brooks. Um, and this, which I think is a valid comparator to New Balance or C Elite, uh, this feels closest to the Brick Brooks shoe. Um, I mean, the SPE, the Hoka, is a, is a bit more stiff. Um, but the three carbon plate shoes have a bit more energy return. Okay, not the Rocket X, which I've, I've moaned on about enough. Um, but this certainly has more energy return uh, than the Brooks shoe. Now, uh, this shoe was 230 euro, uh, and that was 150 euro. So there's a significant price difference. And what a lot of the companies are doing is, particularly say Brooks with this Hyperion Tempo, they then bring out the uh, Hyperion Tempo Elite. And then almost simultaneously, the Hyperion Tempo Elite 2. They didn't bring out a Hyperion Tempo Elite 1 or they, they just gave the first one uh, a non-digit. But either way, uh, those both those shoes, the Hyperion Elite, uh, we'll call it one, and the Hyperion Elite 2 are both available. They're both 250 bucks or 250 euro, uh, something equivalent in sterling, uh, on the Brooks website. Quite why they've 
allowed the first version to be on sale unless they're just running out running out the stock uh, it got badly reviewed from what i could gather uh, i haven't i haven't uh, run in it I'd, I'd quite like to run in it but actually i'm more likely to then get the hyperion elite 2 and try and compare these two i mean essentially one is this with a carbon plate added i think for 150 dollars this is actually a very good value shoe and it's very good for long tempo days bizarrely on the uh, hyperion <laughs> Difficult remembering all these things. On the Hyperion uh, Elite shoe, the first version, I think it had a, a like a 50 to 100 miles uh, design life. Like you'd barely have the damn thing on and it'd be worn out. Uh, it would said you could do one to two marathons. Uh, the second shoe uh, was presumably more durable, but they don't give a design life and they don't give a design life for this. Now I'm gonna run of these and see how long they last because I, I, I check it and we'll, we'll report back obviously. Um, but I do think having a, a sort of daily or tempo type trainer like this and then having its its companion with a carbon plate which you use on a more restricted basis and for for special races etc is is actually a good idea the idea being that the two will feel fairly similar on your foot except you should get more energy return uh from the more expensive shoe now there's a hundred bucks or a hundred euro in the difference so uh that is considerable but later on in the year i hope to test uh, the hyperion uh, Elite 2, unless of course they've brought out the Hyperion Elite 3, but we'll get to that. I think this is a reasonable value shoe. At 150 euro, uh, it's cheaper than these three carbon plated shoes. I mean, it's cheaper than all those. And uh, by having two shoes, uh, one at, at the 250 end, which would be more expensive than all those, uh, and one at this end at 150, it does kind of balance out nicely. So I think it's a good pricing strategy by, by Brooks. I, I, I think it's good. Uh, one of the things I do like about the Brooks site is you can very easily see the pricing in the States or here or Austria, wherever you feel like. Uh, there's no VPN kind of kicking required in order for you to get at a site in a particular country. They're very open with their pricing and uh, hats off to them for that. So would I recommend this shoe? Absolutely, I've, uh, I enjoyed running it last night. I went out last night to run in this, specifically to test it, and I forgot all about the shoe. <laughs> uh, we ran about 11, 12K, uh, out the, it was in the dark, out this out wall, the, to this lighthouse, and uh, it was just a lovely shoe to run in. Um, initially, I, I, I wear them around the house. I, I ran around the block with this on one foot and each of those other three shoes on the other foot, uh, just to try and get some sort of comparator. Uh, but it's a really nice shoe. Um, it doesn't have the pep of a carbon fiber shoe, nor would you expect it to have because they've, that's what the Hyperion Elite 1 and 2 is for. Um, but yeah, I would recommend it. So at 150 euro for a tempo day shoe or longer, faster days, I think it's a great shoe. It's got uh, a really nice feel. It's not tight on your foot like I found the Bedlam to be. Uh, yeah, I'm delighted. I'm delighted with this shoe. I mean, I'm, it's one of those shoes, there's a few of them uh, I did a review of last year's stuff that I actually look forward to running in and uh, this is certainly one of them. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Um, I'll put some uh, links in the descriptions below to all the stuff. You might have some comments. It'd be great if you'd pop them in the comment section below. And uh, it'd be great if you'd subscribe. There'd be a button there, some other videos here that link. But thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.